Mystery in the Air, starring Peter Lorre, presented by Camel Cigarettes. And it is now my great pleasure to confer our academic degree with honor on the most distinguished student of this class. Roderick Raskolnikov, step forward. In the history of our university, there have been few young men who have compared with him in mental brilliance, and few for whom the future held greater promise. <laughs> uh, Roderick. Roderick, I've spoken for the university. Now I want to speak for myself. As a token of the esteem in which I hold you and your abilities, I want to present you with this watch. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, uh, read the inscription. Script? Oh. To Roderick Raskolnikov, may his great gifts bring him the reward of honor and good fortune. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Roderick, my boy, I'm proud to have had you as one of us, and sad that you are leaving. Good luck to you, and God bless you. Again tonight, Camel Cigarettes bring you Peter Lorre in the excitement of the great stories of the strange and unusual, of dark and compelling masterpieces culled from the four corners of world literature. Tonight, Crime and Punishment, adapted from the motion picture starring Peter Lorre and based on the novel by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Mystery in the Air, starring Peter Lorre. Brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. So I, Roderick Raskolnikov, went to the city to achieve honor and good fortune. But one year later, I had achieved neither. Oh, I had written one book, uh, a book on crime, which I had to sell to a publisher for barely enough money to pay my first six months' rent. Oh, the reviews were very nice. Yes, one of them said, uh, the subject is handled with such brilliance that one wonders whether it's the work of a genius or a great detective, or both. <laughs> genius or great detective, <laughs> Can't eat reviews all the time I was starving in a garret room. Come in. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Barnum. Yes, it's me. I haven't had a penny out of you in six months. I know. How much longer do you expect me to wait for my rent? Well, can you stand the strain another half hour? Oh, so you're going to pay me in half an hour? Yes. Just how are you going to raise the money? Oh, that's very simple. I, I'm going to rob a bank. Think you're funny, huh? Well, I don't. You're a disgrace to my house. Maybe, but someday, someday they'll put a sign on this house that I, Raskolnikov, had the privilege of starving here. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh. Uh, is there a pawnbroker? I, I think it's an old woman by, by the name of Leona. Does she live here? Yes. One more flight up. I'll show you. Yeah. I'm going there myself. Thank you very much. May I carry your package? No. No, I can manage. It's this door here. Just ring the bell. What do you want? Ah, oh, it's you, Sonia. Come in. Who's this? One of your gentleman friends? No, I met him on the stairs. Well, what have you got this time? This. This Bible. Hmm. And where did you steal this? I didn't steal it. It's been in our family a long time. What do you want for it? The cover's inlaid with mother of pearl. Stones are garnets. It's worth at least a hundred rubles. I'll give you six rubles for it. But I... If you don't want it, leave it. What have you got, mister? I have a watch. I'll take the six. Here you are. You said six rubles. You gave me one. That's right, six rubles. 
Less three months' interest for your shawl and two months on the necklace and silver buckles. That makes five rubles. Five from six is one ruble. Well, what are you waiting for? Want your Bible back? No. Well, come on. Get out. Get out. Come on, little gutter snipe. All right, mister. Let me see your watch. Here. Hmm. To Roderick Raskolnikov. That's me. May his great gifts bring him the reward of honor and good fortune. (laughs) It's inscribed. I can't give you as much. I want 50 rubles on it. I'll give you 10. All right, give me the 10. There you are. What are you staring at? Don't look at me like that. I'm not looking. I'm not staring. I was watching you put the young lady's Bible and my watch into that trunk. That's all. But I've got nothing in here. Nothing but a lot of trash. A lot of trash. Get out of here. As you say. (laughs) Oh, uh, forgive me. Oh, it's you, Miss Sonia. What are you looking for? My ruble. Dropped out of my hand when she pushed me out the door. Somebody ought to push her straight into the next world. What use is all that money to her? Is is her miserly life worth a hundred others like you, Sir Monod? I'd like to take her by the throat. You shouldn't and... say things like oh, that. Oh, that black beetle. Here's your ruble. I found it. You didn't find that? You took a ruble out of your pocket? I didn't. No, I swear I didn't. Well, I... Thank you. I forgot there was still some kindness in the world. I forgot there there was still some beauty in it. What do you want at this hour? It's after midnight. It's me, Raskolnikov, don't you remember? I've got a valuable vanity case this time. Fine hour this is to come around with your rubbish. But come in. Let's see this valuable vanity case. Here. It's heavy enough. What's it made of, lead? Gold. I'll believe that when I see it. What's the idea of making so many knots? I can't untie this thing. I'll show you the idea. Put on that poker... Put on that poker! I will! Oh, please. On your head, you... You dirty... You old... Hag! Uh, come in. Oh... <laughs> Good morning, Miss Parson. Uh... Fine day, don't you think? Very fine day, huh? I didn't come up here about the weather. Oh, no. Uh, oh, it's about the money, yes. Well, I'll have it today. I promise I'll have it today. Not about the money, either. No, uh, about what? There's a policeman downstairs. Huh? Policeman? What? what is he? Here he is now. Ask him yourself. Are you the writer of Skolnikov? Yes. Well, come along with me. You're wanted at headquarters. Uh, and... There must be some mistake. Yes, there must be some mistake. I, I haven't done anything. What have I done? You'll find out when you get there. Come along. Roderick Raskolnikov, trembling with fear, now stands before the clerk in the police station. Raskolnikov. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You owe your landlady 30 rubles, hmm? and you refuse to vacate the premises. Uh, is that why... <laughs> is that why I've been brought here? Yes. <laughs> Are you going to pay, or must we throw you out? No, I... No. <laughs> I'll pay, I... 
I... I'll pay tomorrow. No, I... Oh, it's Quiet. my rent. It's... It's not funny. Quiet. No, it's the rent, you see. <laughs> Do you hear Quiet, it? I say. Thirty rubles. Nope. <laughs> That's why I've been proud of you. It's one. Stop that shouting. No, stop it. <laughs> What's going on here? Who's that maniac? He's a writer. Named Raskolnikov. Huh? Oh, Raskolnikov. Just the man I want to see. Me? Why, sir? I'm Inspector Porfiry. Oh, Commissioner. I read your excellent book about the crime criminals. Oh, you flat to me, sir. Oh, no, I really mean it. You know, I thought I knew something about the subject, but your book put me and my staff in the kindergarten class. I must talk to you. Uh, come into my office. Thank you, sir. And by the way, perhaps you'd like to help us on a new murder case. It'll give you a chance to see how the blundering police work. Well, uh, a murder case? When... An old pawnbroker was killed last night. Huh? A well-known character named Leona. Uh, uh, yes, I, I've heard of her. I... Oh? What do you know about her? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Think you'll get him easily? Guilty man? Who knows? We may have him now. What do you mean? We brought a man in this morning, a house painter. He had been working in a flat under Leona's. Oh, do you think he did it? <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter. He was found with a pair of earrings. He had blood on his hands. Oh, of course, he has an explanation for these things, but uh, he'll do as a suspect, just to keep our records clear. Records oh, clear. You mean that... Of course, of course. But come, come, let's discuss your book. Let's see if your theory can be applied to this case. My theory? What... Yes. You wrote that ordinary men must obey the law because they are ordinary. But extraordinary men have the right to transgress the law. No. Isn't that right? No, 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 not exactly. What, what I said was that extraordinary men shouldn't be judged by ordinary standards. Uh, for example, take Napoleon if... Uh, I doubt if Napoleon murdered the old pawnbroker. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad my theories give you a chance to be witty. <laughs> if your theory is right, it would take, make it a lot simpler for us policemen. Your extraordinary men had some distinguishing mark. Hmm? Say a medal or a ribbon or a resemblance to Napoleon. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, like yourself, for instance. But uh, to get back to our murderer in this case, he was ordinary enough, all right. Nothing but a stupid coward. What do you mean? If he hadn't been in a panic, he'd have found the old woman's money. Fifteen hundred rubles tucked away in the mattress. Uh -huh. Instead, he took a lot of junk that's no use to him, and he can't unload it. I've got my men watching every outlet. Mm -hmm. Yes, Inspector, you've promised to show me your blundering police methods, and you certainly have. You're holding a man who is probably entirely innocent just to keep your records clear, huh? Well, the painter will do until the real murderer comes in, and he will come in. He'll give himself up through fear, fear of the law or of God. Oh, yes? In the meantime, I'll just wait. I admit I was furious, stupid, coward indeed. And, but then I realized that I wasn't a coward at all on the country. And in facing the inspector so calmly, I, I had learned not to be afraid. Still, I needed money, and now I didn't dare to sell any of the old woman's stuff. I, I determined to try my newfound courage on a publisher of my book. Sit down, Mr. Raskolnikov. I'm glad to see you. We had very nice response on your book. Oh, that's good. Uh... I've almost finished another one. Oh, is that so? Oh, you might let us see it when it's done. Well, uh, you see, as a matter of fact, another publisher, well, he has offered me an advance of 750 rubles on it. He has? Yes. Oh, the pirate. You're my discovery. Well... Look, I'll give you a thousand rubles advance. Hmm? How's that? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> It's wonderful. I took the money. I paid my landlady in full. I, I bought myself a whole new outfit of clothes. Oh, I, I was riding on top of the world. And, but then a disturbing thought occurred to me. Of course, the inspector hadn't suspected me for a moment, but, but undoubtedly he, he would find my name in the old pawnbroker's books. He, he might think it curious. I hadn't mentioned it myself. I, I decided to go and see him again voluntarily. Yes, out of my own free will. That's what an innocent man would do. Or, or, or would he? Well, anyway, I'm going. The 
inspector will see you in just a moment. Thank you. I'm in no hurry. Well, Mr. Raskolnikov. Sonia, what are you doing here? The inspector sent for me. He returned my Bible. He asked me a few questions. Questions? What, what kind of questions? About the day I went to the pawnbroker. Did he want to know anything about me? Yes. What did you tell him? About the money you gave me. Oh. And then he wanted to know. Why? What did he want to know? Before I knew what had happened, he made me tell him what you said. Oh. That she deserved to die. Well, she did, she... The inspector will see you now, Mr. Raskolnikov. Sonia, I must see you later. Where do you live? Catherine Street. First house from the bridge, second floor. I'll be over as soon as I can. Wait for me. This way, sir. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Raskolnikov. I'm delighted to see you again. I've come to claim my watch. Yeah. Your watch? Come on, let's not beat around the bush. I hated to part with it, but I need the money, so... So I took it to the old woman and... What I... old woman? Oh, you know, the pawnbroker, the one that... The one we were talking about. Oh. Oh, did you have dealings with her? Did I? You know I had. You know I was there. I'm... I mean, isn't my name in her book? Oh, now, wait a minute. Right. Why, so it is. Funny, I didn't notice it. What are you trying to do, upset me? Upset me? No, not at all. And I'm sorry, but there's no watch listed among her effects. I'm mm. afraid it's still in the murderer's possession. Well, thank you very much. I must be going out. Oh, uh, by the way, that's a new suit, isn't it? Hmm? Yes, it is. What of it? Why shouldn't I be wearing a new suit, huh? Mm, things have taken a turn for the better, eh? Yes, things have taken a turn for the better. I sold another book. Congratulations. I hope you'll have some theories in this one that'll help me solve this murder. We're uh, still holding that poor wretch of a painter. Oh, oh. Your, your real murderer hasn't come in, huh? No, not yet. But I haven't given up hope. Oh, you're very optimistic. That's good. Suspect anyone in particular? Oh, I suspect anyone and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I'll admit now that for a time I even connected you with the murder. Me? Yes. You know how a policeman's mind functions. No, I don't. I began piecing things in a pattern. Your desperate poverty, the fact you almost fainted when I mentioned the murder the first time. Oh, oh, oh. Your talk of supermen being above the law. Oh, now I can see You're that. going around town flashing all that money, yes, which yes. I didn't know until just now came from your publisher. You had me followed, huh? Well, a matter of routine. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. If I were the guilty man, I'd be too smart to try to sell that junk. I'd have gone into the country and, and buried it under stone. You hear me? Yes, under a big heavy stone. So? Come on, accuse me of murder if you like, but, but don't insult me by believing that I'd overlook 1,500 rubles in a mattress. <laughs> Try your clumsy methods on half-wits, like that poor fool you're going to sacrifice just to keep your records clear. But I'm not accusing you. I don't accuse a man I think is guilty if I have no proof. I just sit and wait. Yeah, you sit and wait. Stop playing this cat and mouse game with me. Yes. If you think you have a case against me, come on, arrest me or or bring me to a trial. I'll show you out. Yes, I did. Inspector, I did. this man just confessed. Yes, huh? I confess. I'm guilty. I'm the murderer. Punish me. You're lying, you fool. You didn't kill her. I hit her over the head with a poker. I hate her. You idiot. Yeah. You didn't even I know did. about her until we arrested you. You didn't know anything about it until we beat it into you. Uh, take him away, officer. He wants to go to Siberia that badly. I'm guilty, I tell you. I'm guilty. Get him out of here. Oh, oh what a triumph for your methods, Inspector. First you tried to make him confess, and now you try to make him believe he's innocent. Doesn't your conscience ever bother you? No. Let the real murderer suffer from his conscience. And it'll trouble him. He's no Napoleon. No, he's not hard enough. He'll come in, and I'll be waiting for him. I'll be waiting. Good luck. Who is it? It's me. Where have you been? Oh, I'm walking the streets. I, I don't know how long. I know it's late. And I had to talk to you, Sonia. I may never see you again. You're going away? Yes. Where are you going? 
I don't know. Then why? Because I'm free now. Yes, I'm free. Uh, free to go where I please and, and do what I please. And Free? From what? Police. They suspected me of the murder. <laughs> oh, it's all over now. Sonia, come away with me. Did they find the guilty man? They had him all along. He confessed this morning. Who was it? Oh, a painter who worked in a house. Why all these questions? Leave me alone. I, I've been questioned enough. Please put that Bible away. I, I don't want to be reminded of that old hag. And Jesus said, take away the stone. What stone? What stone are you talking about? How do you know I hid it under a stone? It's the stone under which Lazarus was buried. Huh? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, thou hast heard me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Sonia... Sonia! You should kneel to me. Have mercy on me, Sonia. I killed that old woman. I, yes, I, I killed her. Why did you do it? Uh, I was mad. What shall I do now? I don't know what to tell you. Because you have no faith. What did I do to have faith? Then I would tell you to confess. Huh? Atone for what you've done. Confess to the police? How else can you save the one who's being confess punished in your place? And confess and go to Siberia and, and rot in prison, Sonia. How can you ask me to do that? Because I love you. <gasps> you love me? Sonia. I know. I know it now. I, you know, I have faith. Uh, you have given it to me. You have made me see myself, uh, yes, as I, as I really was, and just a coward who, who thought himself brave. All right, Sonia, I'll go and do as you say. Oh, my darling. I'll wait for you. I'll always wait for you. Forever. Come in. Good evening, Inspector. Good evening, Raskolnikov. I've been expecting you. I've been expecting you for quite a long time. Now, here is Peter Lorre for a final word. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in a way, this is my final word, because tonight our summer series of classic mysteries comes to a close. I feel deeply grateful for your response to our efforts. Also, at this time, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Makers of Camel Cigarettes, for giving me the opportunity. And I certainly feel compelled to express my deep appreciation for, for all those men who have worked with me, especially our director, Mr. Cal Coon. Next Thursday night, Camel's Bob Hawk Show, one of America's favorite quiz shows, will be heard over these same NBC stations. They tell me Mr. Hawk doesn't murder anybody, or he just quizzes them. Well, to each his own. Good night. <laughs> Crime and Punishment has been adapted from the screenplay Crime and Punishment by arrangement with Columbia Pictures, producers of the Technicolor musical Down to Earth. Listen next Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and 7 p.m. Pacific Time 
for the Bob Hawk Show over these same NBC stations. Music for Mystery in the Air was composed and conducted by Paul Barron. The artists supporting Mr. Laurie tonight were Henry Morgan, Peggy Weber, Joe Kearns, Ben Wright, Louis Van Ruten, Gloria Ann Simpson, and Herbert Butterfield. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.